the Pokemon anime. You've probably heard of it unless you've been living under the biggest rock in the middle of nowhere. For over two and a half decades, this show was the face of Pokemon, possibly even more so than the games it was based on. I mean, it definitely spawned the mascot of Pokemon. Without the anime, Pikachu would probably be just another face in the Pokemon crowd. Someplace that would be, huh? But despite its popularity, I've seen a lot of people online realize something about this show. If you're over 12 years old, it's really freaking boring. I mean, 90% of episodes have the same basic plot. Ash and company find a person or Pokemon with a problem, they work to solve said problem, Team Rocket shows up near the end trying to capture Pikachu, they get defeated, problem is solved, roll credits. Now this isn't to say that there aren't some good aspects of the Pokemon anime. Throughout the years we've had some really good characters, some standout arcs, and incredibly heartfelt moments. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this show was essentially just a marketing scheme for merchandise. That being said, it was a marketing scheme that worked. Without the anime, it's incredibly unlikely that Pokemon would become the highest grossing media franchise ever. Which is why I was insanely surprised when it was announced that after the Journey Saga, the adventures of Ash and Pikachu would be ending. And even though it had been years since I watched the show when this was announced, it still hurt. As much of a marketing scheme as Ash and Pikachu were, the impact they left on my childhood and millions of others can't be understated. I haven't gotten around to watching Pokemon Horizons yet, but I think everyone knows that it's not going to leave nearly the same impact as its predecessor. But today I'm here to talk about something else. It's no secret that even with Pokemon Horizons, there's still a huge void to fill in regards to Pokemon animation. So with that in mind, now's the perfect time for a more mature Pokemon anime. Now what do I mean by more mature? Am I asking for characters to constantly be dropping curse words and make Pokemon battles extremely graphic? Not at all. I'm simply asking for a series that takes itself seriously something that the main anime definitely didn't do, at least most of the time. To understand what I mean, let's look at the Pokemon Company's long list of short series. It all began in 2013, when, as a promotion for the upcoming Pokemon X and Y, the Pokemon Company released Pokemon Origins, a four episode mini series that covered the adventures of Red in an adaptation that was much closer to the original games, covering the most important points of Red and Blue's plot. It was a massive shift from what the fandom usually saw with animated Pokemon content, with this series actually following the plot of the games, as well as being darker in tone and having Pokemon battles that seemed more grounded and realistic than what we saw in the main series. And while it clearly wasn't meant for a full series format, it did get people wondering, what would a series in this style look like? Well, it would be a whole generation later when that idea was finally expanded upon. Three years later, in 2016, the world was introduced to Pokemon Generations. Taking a bit of a different approach than Origins, this series was a collection of 18 shorts, with each roughly 4-5 to five minutes in length. This was still when there were only 6 regions, so each of them got a total of 3 episodes focusing on it. These episodes mirrored in-game events, but also added original moments to help keep the experience fresh. My personal favorite episodes here being The Chase, The Legacy, The Scoop, The Uprising, and The Investigation. And in terms of a more mature Pokemon anime, I think this series has that concept in spades. I mean, could you imagine this? Or this? 
being in the main series? No, me neither. But it's not just its much darker tone that makes this series great, but also its variety. Several of these episodes feature characters from the games that the anime didn't touch, such as Silver and Shelly, and it brings their personalities to life in ways the games never did. Hell, we even get to see characters who were in the anime portrayed in a completely different light. You want to know how to tell if a Pokemon series is great? It doesn't make Iris completely unbearable. That's an accomplishment right there. It was a while longer before we'd get our next series in this style, and that came in the form of Pokemon Twilight Wings. Like Generations, this was also a series of shorts, but limited exclusively to characters in the Galar region. Episodes were a bit longer too, being around 6 to 7 minutes instead of 4 to 5. This was a welcome addition to the Galar region, considering Sword and Shield were complete jokes of a game and you cannot convince me otherwise. And unlike Generations, these episodes don't really follow the plot of the game, because what plot is there to speak of? It's really just a slice of life series that lets us get to know both original and in-game characters, because we can't do that in the games, can we? Anyway, this series is pretty good. It made me like these characters a whole lot more. My favorites are the Nessa episode and the Oleana episode. Moving on. Oh, now we're cooking! So Pokemon Evolutions is essentially Pokemon Generations again, but instead of three mini-episodes per region, there is only one bigger episode per region. They also did the regions backwards, and I can't say I agree with that decision, but it doesn't really matter because this series slaps. Each episode uses its longer runtime to give the characters in question all the development and drama they need for the episode to succeed. My favorite episodes here being The Plan and The Wish. When it comes to The Plan, I mean, it's about Getsus, so what else is there to say? It just gives us more insight as to why he's objectively the best antagonist that Pokemon has ever produced. And in the case of The Wish, I love it because I've always thought that Xenia is one of the most tragically overlooked characters in the entire franchise. She has a great design, an interesting backstory, and with her personality always switching between stoic sage and hyped up battler, she's practically begging to receive an anime adaptation. I'm glad she finally got some love with this episode, as her not showing up in Generations was a big disappointment. And the way the episode ends with her battle theme kicking in, it's awesome! If there ever is a series like this planned for the future, this episode and series as a whole should be a great point of reference. Forgoing the previously established format of one story per episode, Pokemon Hisuian Snow takes a different approach, being only three episodes long, but those three episodes tell one continuous story instead of several small ones. Taking advantage of Legends Arceus's unique setting, Hisuian Snow follows a boy named Alec as he befriends a Hisuian Zoroa, much to the disdain of his father. Flash forward a number of years, and it's his bond with this Zoroa, now evolved into a Zoroark, that ends up saving his life and many others. I'll say right off the bat that I love the setting of this series. Being set far in the past, which shows us what the Pokemon world was like before humans and Pokemon united. So often in this franchise we hear about how people and Pokemon are inseparable, and how they're the best friends anyone could have. But it's interesting to see a break from this formula so as to not feel like we're just getting the same experience over and over. 
I can definitely see something Legends Arceus related getting a larger adaptation, as it's practically a main series Pokemon game at this point, but only time will tell. I had never actually seen Paldean Winds prior to making this video, mostly because I never got around to playing much of Scarlet and Violet, but this series is also alright. It's pretty much a Paldean version of Twilight Wings, being a slice of life series about three students trying to make a video to promote their academy. And as a slice of life series, it works pretty good. The characters are likable and their signature quirks are charming. Mostly anyway, I wasn't a huge fan of Homa. And while it's not my favorite of the series that I've discussed, I do appreciate this series and Twilight Wings for showing that there's more to life in the Pokemon world than just being the best Pokemon trainer, giving it a layer of depth and relatability that I never saw from the main show, and even the superior series that I've discussed could learn something from it. But I think I've talked enough. So let's get to the point. It's honestly pretty frustrating that the Pokemon Company has teased us with this style of a show so many times and hasn't committed to it. I just discussed six different series. Six! So what's the holdup? It's not like it would be too expensive. Remember, Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise of all time so they have all the money they need. They're not creatively bankrupt either. Again, they've done this six times, so I think it's safe to say that they have a handle on this type of thing. But if they do need an idea, I would definitely lean in the direction of generations and evolutions, as they were able to remain faithful to the games in such a way that they took themselves seriously, but didn't lose the sense of wonder that comes with Pokemon. Having a series like this would be nothing but beneficial to the brand, bringing back older fans and showing the world that Pokemon is more than just a happy, fun game for babies. There are still a bunch of characters from the games that haven't had their stories told in this way yet, and they deserve just as much of a chance as everyone else. I hope the Pokemon Company realizes this soon, because given Pokemon's recent controversies, They'll need something like this to keep their older fans interested. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.